What's going on, guys? I'm Max Lone Guy E, and this is Simply Put Sense. Guys, thank you so much for coming through. We're live in Bergdorf Goodman, and on this channel, we talk about some of the best and worst fragrances on the market today. And my goal is to help you guys save time and money. So do subscribe, do hit that notification bell, because my goal is to help you smell your best, but not common. And I guarantee you, stick around this channel. You'll smell your best, but not common. I hope you all are having a great one. But uh, what's going on? Catch my whiff? What's good? <laughs> uh, Rich Mitch, he's kind of asleep. This man, he comes through and he just chills, you know? <laughs> what's going on, Marcel? Nice to see you, bro, bro. Um, yes, we have lift off. Guys, thank you so much for coming through. I am really, really interested in knowing what your scent of the day is. What did you wear today? Um, I actually wore something kind of interesting, a uh, cheapy that I'm testing, actually. I'm not going to tell you too much about what I think about it, but I'll let you know what it is. From the house of Abercrombie & Fitch, Authentic Self. I think this is like a flank of, they did like Authentic Man, Authentic Night, I don't know, a bunch of Authentics. And this is the latest Authentic self by Abercrombie and Fitch. I got the 30 mil, you know, seeing what's good, doing what it is. And I got to tell you, it's not, it's, it's pretty interesting. Um, I love a note of cardamom and fragrances, especially fresh fragrances built for like warmer weather. This is a freshie with a lot of cardamom. I'm talking about a ton of it. Um, so much so that it reminded me a lot of a very cardamom heavy fragrance that you all know and most of you will love. <laughs> um, it's a great fragrance, I gotta say. Well, it's doing its thing. It's working for me so far, I'll put it that way. And um, I got to wear it all day. I've actually gotten a couple of compliments so far. It's working, it's working. I'll tell you about it later. <laughs> 
But Authentic Self by Abercrombie and Fitch, that was my scent of the day. What guys are you wearing? Like, what fragrances would you were you wearing today, guys? I'm really, 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 really curious. Um, guys, the purpose of this video is to talk about a really, really awesome brand that I've been hearing about. Um, nice one, really nice one. Catch my whiff. Aqua de Palmas Bergamano de Calabria. Wow, for the 30 minutes that it lasts. <laughs> See, that's kind of messed up. Um, when a fragrance is great, but it doesn't last long, it's really, really annoying, you know. Um, but great fragrance still, awesome taste for sure. Uh, I can imagine that's annoying, though, that you got to keep reapplying, you know. Uh, but yeah, multiple resprays. <laughs> that's a fragrance you're taking that bottle with you. I hear you, bro. Um, I didn't have to do, well, I took it with me today, but... Um, Gotta say, it wasn't bad longevity. I, mm, four or five hours and then you reapply, you know? But pretty interesting. What really drew me to this fragrance though, Frank Vocal, the perfumer behind um, Santal 33 and a bunch of others did this fragrance for Abercrombie & Fitch. So I was really curious to see what it was like. I'm actually a fan of what he does. Frank Vocal does some really interesting fragrances and um, I like his technique. I like his style, you know? So. When I found out that he designed this, I was like, oh, I'm gonna go grab that, and I did. Not bad. Um, so yeah, um, we are gonna be talking about, so last week, guys, this whole video is gonna be piggybacking off of last week's video, and last week's video was all about niche brands that are creating artistic, beautiful, awesome fragrances that will allow you to smell better than most people in the room, would allow you to smell a lot more expensive than most people in the room and yet not spend a ton of money in the process, you know? Um, so these were brands that will allow you to smell amazing but not kill your pockets for the privilege. And I wanted to, one of my, well, an honorable mention in that video was a brand called Savoir Faire. And I've been hearing really, really great things about Savoir Faire and last week I ordered the Discovery set and it came hella quick. Um, <laughs> This is what it looks like, guys. The brand is called Savoir Faire, and that means know-how or, you know, to know how to do stuff, you know? When you have Savoir Faire, that's a person that knows what they're doing. Basically, you have know-how. So, Savoir Faire, I kind of dig the little crown thing. Um, that's kind of, that's very, very Basquiat-ish, Basquiat vibing, you know, very artistic. Um, it's a very, the way they position themselves is as an urban brand, you know, um, a, a urban, a modern, a luxury brand, but a brand that doesn't take itself too, per too seriously, you know, and I really get that from the creator of the line, um, a gentleman named Chris, and he's actually um, a really, really He's an interesting character because this dude actually, uh, Chris Classic is his name, and he actually started out, he was an MC. This man is a producer. He produced music. He actually won an American Music Award for one of his productions for a movie. <laughs> I was fascinated to delve into this dude's background, and it was interesting because on his website, supposedly he went into business with another guy, a perfume maker, and him and that perfume maker were developing a brand together. And the, the perfume maker he was working with, you know, out of nowhere just ghosted him. And he kept going. And instead of, I guess you could say, giving up and feeling defeated, this man actually kept going and moving forward with his dream, which was to create an amazing fragrance house. And I'm building this up, and I really don't know how any of his fragrances smell, but we're gonna find out today. And if they don't smell up to par, you know what's gonna happen. It's going to get that womp womp. And this is going to be an, a fragrance first impressions video on the entire house of Savoir Faire. I was able to get the entire discovery set of five fragrances. And I got to tell you, I'm really, really into this presentation. Like, look at what this, look at what this is doing. You know, really, really, really dope. Um, the thing I love about I got to tell you, like stuff like this really, really impressed me because when you're an, an, an independent house, when you're a small business, 
with not a lot of ton of uh, with not a lot of like financial backing behind you, it really is important to make your first impression a good first impression. And this is a really nice first impression for a brand like this. I gotta tell you, I really really like this a lot. Anyway, um, Savoir Faire, really really cool name. Gotta tell you, <laughs> really really cool name. Um, this gentleman though. Chris Classic, he moved from New York to Atlanta, and he is doing it up in Atlanta. And so we're going to get into this house. I got skin. I haven't sprayed on anything on my arms today. So um, clean, washed them even before I even got here. So just going to make sure that I'm on point. Um, I'm really excited to smell these fragrances. And yeah, so we're going to start with Beau Noir. By the way, I want to show you what the website looks like. So we're going to get into that real quick. The website is really, really cool. Um, the website is really, really dope. Um, one of the things that I really find interesting, one of the things that I found interesting is... Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. One of the things that I found interesting was also how really cool the website is. The website is on point, guys. Smooth, clean. As you can see at the top, this brand is a black-owned business. And um, I honestly don't even think that matters, you know? It's interesting, though, but I almost don't think that matters. What matters more than anything is the thought behind the product, the presentations, the stories behind the fragrances, the ideas, what makes them special, that matters more than anything, you know? Um, but I'm really, really excited to get into this. This website is on point though. Look at this thing, guys. Um, they sell other things. They sell frames and apparel, but we're gonna, and home fragrances, but we're gonna hone in on these luxury parfums. And I love the fact that they're so well-priced. Look at this, $135 for a 50 ml bottle of any of these fragrances, which is pretty, pretty cool in terms of like indie house price point. The, um, the discovery set, after I talked about them last week and I bought mine, I guess a couple of people got inspired and sold them and bought, sold them out because now they have no more left. But keep checking because they'll always have them available. $20 for five fragrances and this size is, is pretty damn good. Um, and they also have like travel sprays of 10 mils for $25. Like all really great price points for these fragrances. Excuse me for going so crazy with this um, mouse guys. And they got a trio discovery set of their 10 mils for 60, for $70. Another just very, very fair priced brand. Yeah, I'm really excited. I'm really, really excited. And um, hold up, let me show you what this brother looks like so you all know who this person is behind this amazing brand. Hopefully it is amazing. I haven't sprayed one of these yet. Um, but the breakdown of this line. So Chris Classic and a performer named J.A., uh, a perfumer named J.A. I guess we don't know who J.A. is. I'm curious to know who J.A. is. I would love to have Mr. Classic on this web, um, on this live so we can talk about who Mr. J.A. is, who goes to them. Check out this entire story, it's really, really interesting. The plan was that J.A. would assist Classic in the creation aspect and in turn Classic would channel, channel traction back to revamp and reboot the Supreme Aroma line, which was the perfumer J.A.'s collection, well, fragrance line. For an entire year, the two made a concerted effort to meet regularly to build the scent profile, despite both being fathers and husbands and entrepreneurs, in other words, extremely busy. Um, in the late, in the final stages of the production, J.A. chose to cut off communication, ghosted him. And as a result, instead of again feeling defeated, this man carried on and went forward with his collection. I got to tell you, hearing stuff like that really, really inspires me in terms of like a person that does not allow um, stress and craziness to affect them, you know. That's pretty awesome to me. Um, so we're going to delve into these fragrances. And I'm going to start off with Beau Noir, the first one. Beau Noir. Okay, let's do it. And the other crazy thing is this fragrance line is not on Fragrantica. 
I thought that was kind of weird. Um, they are on Parfumo, which is another reason why I love Parfumo so much, because, you know, Parfumo actually um, lets, you know, new brands get some light. And so the first fragrance, Beau Noir. Oh, okay. Hmm. Okay, um, let's see what's in this fragrance. Beau Noir. According to this, according to this, Beau Noir is an embodiment of extreme sensuality. While smelling it, I gotta say it is, I would say it's a sexy scent, for sure. The ingredients, amber, patchouli, cana flower, cana flower, oud, Ceylon, cinnamon bark, cedarwood, eucalyptus, bakur musk of Morocco. So it definitely does have like this interesting Middle Eastern style to it. It's really, really, really nice. It's a warm, I would say, it's a very warm scent. Um, very warm and spicy. The patchouli in the fragrance is not killing me. I don't get overly earthy patchouli in this fragrance. Ceylon cinnamon, I heard you, brother. Very, very interesting. I gotta say, smelling it, I really, really like this scent. It has like a lot of quality to it. It has like, it's, it doesn't have that perfumey scent, that chemical scent that I hate to smell um, in any fragrance. And it doesn't do that at all. Ah, it's really, really beautiful. I gotta tell you, um, there's something about it that almost comes across boozy. Um, I love the amber in this scent. Uh, I don't get as much oud as I would hope for. I was hoping to get a little bit of a skank in the background, you know, something to give it a little bit more grr, you know. I love that, that skank, that dankness, but wow. Very good. Very, very good. <laughs> I gotta say, that's a, that's a really, really nice start. It's a really nice start. It's warm, it's deep, it's a rich experience. It's in a family of scent we know, but I really dig the cinnamon aspect to it. The last time I smelt a cinnamon dominant, dominant fragrance like that was like, you know, um, Spice Bomb, which had a nice cinnamon note in there. I don't get Spice Bomb from this, although that's funny that once I said the word Spice Bomb, this fragrance started to remind me of it. They're completely different though, totally different. If anything, I could honestly say that would smell more designer and this definitely does smell niche. I love the way this comes across. Okay, <laughs> I feel like we're on, a, we're on a good start guys. Bon Noir. By Savoir Faire. Nice beginning, guys. Um, so the next fragrance we're going to talk about is called Sin Santo and Sage. Uh -huh. I really, I really, really like that name. First of all, it's, it has like two ingredients that I really, really mess with in fragrance. I like sage. I like the way sage smells. And I like the way Palo Santo smells. And I like that this man came out with a fragrance that would appeal to like a segment of the black community that, that really likes to burn sage and Palo Santo. <laughs> oh no, you know, definitely, definitely speaking to a cultural perspective that I appreciate. Um, uh, I love burning sage in the house. My father burns it everywhere. Um, Palo Santo, I love burning also actually by the sticks, by the bunch and just go off um, with both. Uh, so. <laughs> 
Uh, sage is one of those things that like it'll smell like socks, you know, dirty socks, like when you first light it. But then after like half an hour, it starts to smell really, really nice in the house. But you have to get through that like gym sock phase to get to the good part. But, you know, it is what it is when it comes to sage when you burn it. But I'm excited about this. So, again, this fragrance is sounded pretty, pretty interesting to me. Um, just going by the name, I'm expecting it to be a smoky, woody fragrance that's green. Let's see if I'm correct. All right, so we're going to spray this also on the wrist. Ah. <laughs> exactly what I expected. Very green. Ooh. Wow. Okay. Um, I did not expect this. I did not expect this. Um, hmm. And I love, I'm, I'm, I got to tell you guys, I'm actually, uh, for this to be two for two. <laughs> wow. Okay. Oh, we're off to a really nice start, my guys um, and ladies. Uh, ooh, Sin Santo and Sage, guys. Wow, what? There is definitely some citrus in this scent. Let's figure this out. All right, guys, let me share my screen with you. Oh man. <laughs> okay. Um. So, Sin Sage and San, Sin Santo and Sage. The Palo Santo tree has a life of about forty years, and then it dies off. For premium quality aromatherapeutic essential oil, the naturally fallen wood remains ten years additional to cure before being steamed, distilled. Only wild harvested trees that have fallen naturally are used for making this essential oil. It's a tree that's native to Peru, Ecuador, and other South American countries. Interesting stuff. Interesting stuff. Definitely love this experience right here. Wild harvest, Palo Santo, Clary Sage, Oud, and Broxen bergamot, Japanese cedar, tobacco, grapefruit, musk, cardamom, cashmerian, and heliotrope. This is impressive. This is impressive. I am absolutely impressed. <laughs> wow. Okay. Wow. Um, wow. I'm, imp I'm impressed guys. Uh, this is pretty good. Wow. This is pretty good. <laughs> oh no. I think I'm really, really feeling what we're doing here. I really, I'm really digging this guys. Like, I'm really, really feeling this fragrance. Like, this is a fragrance I would absolutely buy without question. This, the citrus is going away, so I'm no, no, I'm no longer getting that overdose of grapefruit that is calming down. But again, I'm getting this warm, sexy, very interesting scent that doesn't have a fruitiness to it, but there's a fruitiness to it. Like, this kind of gives me... Wow, that citrus in this fragrance is really, really, really blowing my mind because I don't expect a fragrance to do this. I don't expect like such a fruitiness to or something so woody, so warm. <laughs> Unexpected, attractive. Easy to compliment, easy to wear. This is more of a night out scent or cold day fragrance. I was hoping for more dirty again. I was hoping for that sage to be a little funky. I was hoping for that, that ooh to be a little bit ooty. But, you know, touches definitely adds up. 
And this adds up to a really attractive, beautiful fragrance that's very, very warm, very sexy. Again, there's a theme going on here. Ooh. Beau Noir is uh, drying down into even more spicy, cinnamony, woodiness. Um, I'm actually interested in seeing if these fragrances can also layer, but uh, these are two amazing experiences that I would say are really, really dark, very, very sexy, very mature fragrances that any, I think any guy or any woman could easily wear. Um, <laughs> okay, I mean... I got to tell you guys, I'm really, really, really appreciating what I'm smelling so far from Savoir Faire. I'm definitely getting know-how from this brand, and that's awesome because a lot of independent brands, especially independent brands made from people who were, let's say, rappers at one point, <laughs> which aren't many, but you would imagine that like people who are not really, like, it's really interesting to know that people who are like creative in other avenues are making fragrances that are actually worthy. You know, that's impressive to me because not a lot of people, um, not a lot of people in, in music could come out with fragrances and do well and make fragrances that are not basic or not what you would expect. And I don't expect this. I really don't. That opening was crazy, but the dry down is starting to sound, it's starting to mellow out. Um, it's still smelling awesome, but it's not as candy-ish as it once was. Okay. I like, I like, I like. Okay. So far, we're good. Um, so far, we're off to a really, really nice start. Um, so the next fragrance is called Ascension. And Ascension is... <laughs> Ascension is a really, really awesome name. Uh, I, really, I really like this man's, uh, his titles. The, the titles of his fragrances are really, really cool to me. Ascension is something that, you know, we all strive to, to get to. We all strive to get to a higher place. Um, mentally, spiritually, physically, we're all trying to better ourselves. So I like the idea of a fragrance that speaks to that. And so let's get this on skin. Going right over to the next hand. Ascension. Oh. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, Ascension. <laughs> Wow, Ascension is green. Wow. You know what's so interesting? This is so niche and I'm so impressed. <laughs> Guys, you don't understand. This is so niche. And I'm here for it. Go off, go off, go off, savoir faire. There's a fragrance from a house called Maison Detto. They have a fragrance called Macanudo. I talked about it in a live stream a bunch of streams ago. This smells very, very similar to it, and I like this a lot more. This is a lot better to me in terms of wearability, um, and I really just find it more attractive, just personally speaking. And I'm really, really blown away because I thought that was like the most unique green fragrance. And then I smell this and it's like kinging it and it's amazing. <laughs> okay, um, what is this fragrance, guys? Let's see what's in this. This fragrance has blue lotus, papyrus, fresh earth, sandalwood, fig. Oh, this is speaking my language right now. Haitian vetiver, black pepper, bergamot, white sage. Japanese cedar pear musk. Okay, wow. Definitely smelling the fig in this. Love fig, love, love, love fig. Definitely smelling the fig in this. 
It's green. It's crunchy. I smell leaves. I smell earth. It smells like a, this would be the perfect fragrance to wear on a rainy day. Um, oh, wow. Okay. Very, very nice. This is like a fragrance you can wear now. You know, this would have made a perfect spring scent, but. And there is warmth to this. There's a lot of warmth to this. I mean, you got like some pepper. Although the pepper is very, very light, you're not getting it overdosing in an overdosed way. It's very, very, very easy breezy. But you definitely smell vetiver. You definitely smell fig. You certainly smell papyrus and blue lotus. Blue lotus. You smell a flower. I don't know if it's lotus or not, but I'm definitely smelling flowers in this fragrance. And not only that, it's like a really, really, really clear flower. Like it's petal, you know? Oh, man. Very wearable for men and women easily. But this is probably the most unisex of the three that, well, they're all unisex. What am I talking about? I think women would easily smell amazing in this, but I think they would probably be more drawn. Well, it depends on the person, I guess. It's hard to say. They all really are beautiful. And I think they would appeal to almost any person. It, it depends. Like, it depends on your taste. Like, I'm really impressed with this collection of fragrances. I would easily suggest to get this line. The fact that I'm smelling, the fact that I've smelled three so far out of five, I feel like it was definitely worth the $20 I spent. <laughs> really, really worth this $20 I spent. Like, if I got one really great fragrance out of these fives, I would say worth the money I spent. But so far, the way they smell... Really, really impressive on point. Now, I need to see how they wear, which is also important. That's why I'm kind of aching to get these on skin. The next fragrance, guys. Let's just get to it. The next fragrance, because I want to smell these in the dry down, too. The next fragrance. What the hell is the next fragrance? The Whiskey Rose. Oh, no. Here we go again. Another dark fragrance, but in the rose context. Oh, Let's do it. Let's go. Um, <laughs> let's go. Where is this going, though? Um, all right. Up this arm. I got one left, and I got no more room. Okay. Let's do it. Let's let this waft. And while that's wafting, let's get our noses back to this. Blue Noir. Nice, smooth, almost boozy, um, almost vanillic. Sin, Santo, and Sage. Good. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Guys, like, I'm really feeling this. Like, come on, this is good. Oh, no. Oh. Oh, yeah. Amazing. Amazing. Okay. Now we're going to smell the whiskey rose. Oh, okay. Wow. 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 <laughs> wow. 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 I've been on a rose vibe lately, right? And I really, really like this rose fragrance. People. Oh, oh my God. Oh, wow. I don't, I don't even know what to say about it. It's just, um, hmm. I, I'm like, wow. 
this is full bottle worthy. Without question, this is full bottle worthy. I mean, I really would love to see how it develops and how it, how it, but that opening, my goodness. It's like a, it's incense-y, woody and rosy whiskey. I'm not sure. Maybe like a barrel. Like maybe if you like put a bunch of roses in a whiskey barrel and then sealed it up and then like in a bunch of months you opened it and this is what you're smelling like. <sighs> and I also like the fact that the rose is there, but it's not like it's not like all rose, you know what I mean? It's like, you know how like you sometimes smell rose and it's like very, very grandma. Well, you're not getting grandma rose here. You are definitely not getting grandma rose here. This is nothing dewy. This is, this is like roses just drenched in, in, in booze, basically, in woods. It's more of a witty rose, you know, than a boozy rose. Oh, oh my God. Oh, wow, 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 wow. So, um, yeah, wow. Good stuff. Really good stuff, guys. Also good stuff. Let's see what's in this. Um, I got to tell you, <laughs> Whiskey Rose is killing me right now. I'm really, really digging this so far. Um, let's go to the screen. Let's go ahead. Like, I mean, ouch. Like, this is just breaking my heart right now. Um, <laughs> in the era of giving people their flowers, we probably opt to send them delicious cocktails instead. The whiskey roses are compromised, beautiful dark roses saturated by the perfectly garnished old fashioned. That I could see. Old fashioned with this for sure. Wow. This is very, very unique. They're not, there's nothing that I'm smelling that smells like something else from another brand. That's so impressive to me because so many brands create fragrances that smell like other fragrances. It's so hard to make things that smell interesting and unique these days and have its own identity. And these all have their own identity. Of course, again, that Ascension reminds me of a fragrance that is very, very unique and even weird to a lot of people. And I like this one even better. And I doubt they were trying to smell like each other because Maison Detto and Savoir Faire are brands that very few people even know exist. So I doubt they were like, you know, trying to copy the other, you know, it just seems like two brands stumbled on a really cool idea. And one, I feel like just did it a little bit more artsy and the other did it a little bit more friendly. And I really like the friendly version, to be honest. Oh, wow. The whiskey rose, I'm really digging, guys. Like, it's really good. <laughs> it's really good. And last but not least, we're going to smell Soul Cafe. Oh. Um, <laughs> Soul Cafe. Soul Cafe. Let's do it. Uh, I don't even know where to spray this, guys. Like, um, am I going to smell my fingers? <laughs> smell my fingers guys <laughs> that's funny actually funny thing is I've actually um when I spray fragrances and I don't have room on my skin I end up spraying my fingers and I end up like going on a train and I'm just like smelling my fingers and it it's I mean it gotta look weird to somebody it's gotta look weird to somebody <laughs> all right guys um so yeah so now I'm spraying soul cafe Oh, very fruity. Very, 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 very fruity. 
very citrusy, very citrusy, very, very nice, very nice indeed. <laughs> Wow. Okay. Soul Cafe is again not what I expected. It's sweet, it's fruity, it's chewy. Kind of reminds me of candy. I'm definitely getting something like candy ish from this scent. Oh, wow. That's really good. Um,. Not my favorite amongst the five, but I like it. It's definitely tropical-ish. It smells like um, pineapple-y, like it smells in that, like I'm, I don't even know if there's pineapple, I don't think there's pineapple, I don't know if there's pineapple in this, but it smells very fruity. Like there's like a fruit basket, but it's a very, it doesn't smell synthetic fruit. It smells very, very natural. Definitely interesting. Um, I'm, I'm not as into this one as I'm into the others. And that's saying not much because I still would buy this. <laughs> I still would own this fragrance. It's nothing that I have that smells like it. Again, I got to see how it wears. But based on how it smells, it's a scent that I would be attracted to and I would like. Um, yeah, for sure. But the style of this fragrance doesn't wow me as much as the others. Hmm. Let's get into these in a row. Um, after Blue Noir has settled on my skin, it's now like an ambery, woody fragrance. It's chill. It's not that strong on my skin. It doesn't come across loud but I can smell it for sure. Hmm. Very, very nice. I would buy that. Uh, I like fragrances like this. I'm actually surprised that there's no booze in this fragrance. I'm surprised there's no vanilla in this scent. I think cashmere is in this, so that probably takes the place of the vanilla. It's something warm, it's warm and huggable. It's a very comforting fragrance, in my opinion. Definitely something I can see for gentlemen and women who want to be like the sexiest woman in the evening, you know? That's really good stuff. Mm, okay. Um, and now, Sin, Santo, and Sage. Definitely getting the Palo Santo heavy in this fragrance. Like Palo Santo is like, like real strong Palo Santo all day in this. And it's great. Hmm. This is a really, really interesting fragrance right here. I'm really digging the way this smells. I'm oh, I cannot wait to see what this does. I can't really wait to actually wear that the way I like to wear fragrances, which is pretty strong. Like I might finish the whole sample, at least half of it in one sitting, to be honest with you, in one go, because I would really want to experience this. It's, it almost comes across very minty. The eucalyptus in this fragrance makes it very clean and fresh, fresh. It really comes across beautiful but not in an expected fresh way. And that's why I like it. Palo Santo is also a very fresh wood. You know, um, when you burn Palo Santo, there's a freshness to that scent, even though it comes across very heavy and woody. And there's also a citrus note to it. There's a, a smokiness to it, clearly. But there's something about it that comes across fresh and refreshing. And I really like Palo Santo as a woody scent you can wear um, in summer weather although i would be careful because if it's smoky you're going to be killing people but i really like the way sin sage 
Sin Santo and Sage Smells. Uh, yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> that's a real good one, guys. Wow. Um, I'm really curious to see what is in Rose Whiskey. Uh, we didn't get into that. So we're going to find out what's in these last two fragrances. In, Ro in Whiskey Rose, Rose Absolute, Grandi Florum Jasmine, <laughs> Leather Organic Vanilla Nagar Matha. I love I love Nagarmatha. I think that's um, Champaka. Anyway, I really, really love that experience. Tonka bean, and that's probably why I like this fragrance so much. Um, <laughs> Tonka bean, sandalwood, muhu. What? Muhuhu? What is muhuhu? <laughs> Let me know, guys, if you ever heard of muhuhu. That's really really interesting um <laughs> choya loban get out labdanum bergamot oh man guys i'm really digging the whiskey rose the whiskey rose is making me happy it's really making me happy those ingredients making me happy um really really doing a great job and the final scent was Soul Cafe. And Soul Cafe is tobacco, bergamot, blood orange, makes sense, black pepper, patchouli, private musk blend, amber wood, oud, lavender, Ara Arabic coffee, and firewood. Now, when I, when I saw the name Soul Cafe, I'm not going to lie, I was expecting heavy vanilla. And I was expecting heavy coffee. And that's not what I'm getting in this scent. There's something waxy about Soul Cafe. Um, not a bad fragrance at all. A very, very interesting experience, especially when you consider there's tobacco, patchouli, like a lot of the notes in this. This is a really well blended scent, I have to say. It's extremely well blended. I'm here smelling my fingers in Bergdorf Goodman. Very sexy, right? <laughs> oh, man. Um, I really like this one, too. This one is on point. Uh, guys, like, we have to, I have to rank these. I have to rank these. I have to say what's getting the lady was not, was getting the womp womp. So let's do it. When it comes to Soul Cafe, I'm leaning to the womp womp only because it's not for me. But do I think it's a womp womp fragrance? Absolutely not. I'm just disappointed that there's not enough coffee because it's called cafe. So I'm expecting... You know, but this is, I guess, more of an environment, more of like a space, you know, and in that case, it does make sense. It's not gourmand. It's not edible. I think this is one that a lot of women would easily, easily gravitate toward if they don't gravitate toward the warm woodies. You know, this is a very, very attractive fragrance. I would love to smell this on a woman. I would wear this too. <laughs> I would wear them. Too. I would wear all of them. I think this is a really, really, really exciting new brand. Um, and they're not even that new. They've been around for six years, since 2017. But guys, get your sample kit when they get on. Because honestly, they are worth owning. Um, you have to smell these. And I wish they were more available. It's a shame that brands like this aren't in Bergdorf or Nordstrom or, you know, Lucky Scent. Like, Hey, guys, Lucky Scent, you know, Scent Bar. What are you guys doing? Get these brands in your store. There's a lot of great brands that I don't see around, and it's a shame, you know. Um, Savoir Faire is impressive. Like, these are all impressive. 
they're all impressive. They all smell like quality fragrances. They all smell niche. They all smell like, they all smell like fragrances I would not expect to smell at a Sephora or an Ulta or a Blue Mercury. I don't, these fragrances don't come across as like basic at all. Soul Cafe might be the easiest fragrance. Like it might be the most, for the most broad taste. Like if I would like choosing that one fragrance that I think all people would like because most people have very basic taste, I think they would love Soul Cafe. And that's not to say Soul Cafe is basic at all. It's definitely not. But it's the one that I think more people would gravitate toward. It's the one that I think more people would say, yep, that's the one I want out of that sample pack. But if you're a bit more intermediate and advanced in your taste and when it comes to fragrance, if you're more of a stinky cheese kind of girl or guy, you might really, really like that whiskey rose. That, um, that, <laughs> that, um, the, ro the whiskey rose is, is just destroying me right now. That's a beautiful fragrance. So I would have to say number five would be Soul Cafe. Wow, they're all really well done, guys. Wow. <laughs> I mean, it's a shame that I have to rank them because, like, they're all really, really good. I would tie two for three. I wouldn't put it. There is no number four. <laughs> okay. As they're drying down, guys, they're smelling amazing. They're, they're not killing, they're not like, sh like blowing up the room, but I can't really tell because I'm probably nose blind at this point. I have five fragrances on my skin. The Whiskey Rose comes across really, really bold. It's not a light fragrance whatsoever. Bon Noir comes across kind of smooth and chill. It's not like overdoing me, but man, really into it. Wow. Um, and yeah, okay, so <laughs> number five, Soul Cafe. Easily out of my, based on my taste, I would say Soul Cafe would be the fifth best out of this five group. But it would be the most commercial. It would be the most likable by most people. But it goes to show I'm not about like likability for most people. I'm a, I'm a, I prefer my fragrances to really, really be statement makers. And they are statement makers. But if you're someone who just wants to smell amazing, but not as artistic, but still artistic, <laughs> I would say So Cafe could be something you could like. Especially if you like citrus fragrances, especially if you like kind of like citrus scents that have like a unique style to them, I think you might appreciate So Cafe. It's getting woodier as it dries down, and that's kind of like the broad overall aesthetic, aesthetic of Savoir Faire. Very woody, very warm, very sexy fragrances. Very, very, very sexy fragrances, if I would say. Even their, their green, like, grass fragrance smells attractive. It smells like, you know, enjoying a, a day with your partner um, on, like, having a this is a picnic fragrance. Like this smells like you and your shorty just enjoying each other's company or you and your man, depending on who you are. Like this is just, I mean, it's just a really, really beautiful scent. I'm imagining grass stains though. <laughs> I'm imagining like, you know, like rolling around in the grass, you know, that's the kind of vibe that, that it's offering, you know? Okay. So, um, Beau, Beau Noir is probably, damn, I don't know what's my favorite, guys. I'm having a hard time. Okay, my number one favorite is going to be the Whiskey Rose. The Whiskey Rose is absolutely my favorite out of the five. It's my number one. So my number one is Whiskey Rose. My number two. <sighs> Sin Santo and Sage. 
That is a really beautiful Palo Santo based fragrance. If you're into Palo Santo, guys, if you like that vibe, if you're into it, you're going to like Sin Santo and Sage. It really highlights Palo Santo in a way that's very attractive, very authentic, very beautiful. And Palo Santo is kind of like the note of the moment. It's like the note du jour, you know? It's like everyone is putting Palo Santo in fragrance. And for good reason. It's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful experience. And Sin, Sage and Sin Santo and Sage is an amazing, beautiful experience. So, yes. Number one. Number two, Sin, Sage, Sin Santo and Sage is definitely number two. Number three would have to be... <laughs> Um, number three would have to be Beau Noir. Beau Noir, I'm really, really feeling in every respect. Beau Noir is absolutely beautiful. Um, <laughs> number four would have to be Ascension. And it's unfair that I have to put Ascension at number four because I think Ascension could be easily a number one. Uh, this is beautiful. It's very unique, very artistic, very green, and I really, really dig the way this smells. But it would have to be number four based on the rankings if I have to just be real with you all. So yeah, number four and number five is Soul Cafe to me. I think each one of these fragrances are worthy of your time, guys, and that's why, let's go. The Whiskey Rose, number one, getting a lady. And now we have Beau Noir. Beau Noir is getting the lady. Come on. That's right. Getting the lady. Sensage and Santo. Sensage and Santo, guys. You know what it is. It's getting the lady. Come on. And come on now, um, Ascension is definitely going to get the lady. Ascension, let's go. Now, I kind of don't even know what I'm doing with Soul Cafe because Soul Cafe is probably like my least favorite. Um, and Soul Cafe, because of, you know, Soul Cafe, Soul Cafe is, is good, but for my taste, I'm not into it. Um, but it's a beautiful scent. It's a beautiful scent, but oh, it's the one I wouldn't buy. So if, if I have to be completely honest, I would have to say, because I wouldn't buy it. Um, and that's just for me. It doesn't mean that it's not a worthy scent for every one of you. I honestly think every one of you needs to smell it because it's, it's good. But it's just not something that I would purchase. And because of that, I'm going to give it the womp womp. <laughs> Be nice. You guys can sit together. Oh! So, yeah. Savoir Faire. Oh, my goodness. Savoir Faire is a brand that I think deserves a lot of attention. Have any of you smelled this collection of perfume? I'm really curious and I would really love to know. Um, I'm also going to go up and see what some of you have been talking about. Um, let's get into these comments. What are your comments, guys? What do you think about Savoir Faire? Um, have you all smelled this brand? I'm really, really curious. So, um... <laughs> Uh, yes, these are not 3 mLs. I think these are like 2.5 or 2 mLs. Um, gotta say, though, regardless, insane, insane price for these. Like $20, like insane. Like if you have friends or people that you know that love perfume, buy this, give it to them for Christmas. Get that out the way. <laughs> for, for sure. Like it's a worthy gift. I'm feeling kind of guilty that I gave this to Womp Womp, so I'm trying to see if 
I was a little hasty. <laughs> it kind of reminds me of like a toned down Herba Pura. Like imagine like a Herba Pura, but less Herba Purin, you know, like Imagine Herba Pura that's not doing that much, you know? It's not going that hard with that Herba Pura. That's kind of what this is doing on my skin. It's like a muted, fruity experience, but with that scream that you kind of get like from Herba Pura, but it's not like a loud, obnoxious, fruity experience. Some people could say Herba Pura is that, but yeah, I'm feeling kind of guilty. I gave it the womp womp, but... <laughs> I still wouldn't buy it, but I still think it's great. You know, I would definitely, definitely. Uh, I would suggest it. I would recommend it, although I wouldn't buy it. I would easily recommend it. Um, as a fraghead, holding off wearing anything until the live must be tough. No. Um, yeah, it is tough. I mean, I've been spraying here, but I wasn't spraying here, you know? And in Bergdorf, I got to be honest with you, I always want to go around and spray almost everything. There's so many things I'm testing. So I got to be honest with you, it is kind of hard to wait till the end of the day to uh, <laughs> to wear what I'm into. Um, yes, you're right, Cast My Wear. For granted, it seems to be really slow when it comes to me adding, when it comes to adding new houses to their directory, and that's a little unfortunate. I find that they're a little bit uber slow when it comes to like sharing brands that are like, you know, people of color running them, you know, but I don't think that's like a conspiracy. I just think that a lot of brands don't know how to reach out to uh, Fragrantica and build those relationships and make those introductions. But it is unfortunate that Fragrantica does not stay on top. I mean, you can go to Check this out, guys. You can literally go to, and this is what I love about Parfumo, and this is why I'm a fan of Parfumo. You can go to Parfumo and literally check out the exact things you're not getting at, um, at Fragrantica, which is one of the reasons why I'm such a fan. Parfumo, you can literally find out everything you want to know about Savoir Faire. And I also find it really fascinating that they have ratings. So, boom. Beau Noir, the scent that I love. Got a rating of nine on only two votes, but I can see why. Bon Noir is sick. Very, very beautiful. That fragrance actually really speaks to me. Um, the fragrance Savoir Faire. I don't even think I got a fragrance called Savoir Faire. Nope, I did not. So that's a fragrance that I never got to try. Wish I smelled it. Came out in 2017. Sin Santo and sage 9.3 out of three ratings um gotta say it's really really awesome this brand is is getting good love from the few people who are aware of it and that's what i love about brands like this because when no one knows about it i want to know about it especially when they're doing something awesome and the whiskey rose ugh, six cent amazing fragrance yeah, that's a, that's a sexy, sexy, incense -y rose. Not overly jammy, not overly sweet, just insane. Anyway, Parfumo.net is a great place to find out about this line. Let's see what they think about Soul Cafe. Of course, everyone loves it. <laughs> and I gave it a womp womp, and everyone loves it, which is absolutely insane. Um, but of course, ex that's, you know, what you would expect. Um, <laughs> Um, this is the website. Well, this is the Instagram for Savoir Faire. Definitely go and follow this, this, uh, page guys. And, um, and order your fragrances. Like get, make sure you leave a note saying it is due to get their, their, uh, sample packs together because you need your sample pack ASAP. Um, really, 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 really impressive collection of fragrances from this collection, guys. I'm really blown away by it. Anyway, let's get back to your comments. Um, Ceylon cinnamon, very interesting. I agree. I mean, Ceylon cinnamon is a, you don't see that often, you know? You don't see that often at all. Are you eventually going to return to your old video formats? Um, greetings from Germany. I'm, I'm hoping to at some point, Daniel, you know? I'm really hoping to. It's just I don't have an editor, and it's really hard for me to edit my own videos at this point and maintain the standard that I have, you know, um, I kind of will be doing 
um, some recorded videos, but again, I gotta, I gotta see. I might figure out how to do it on this platform and then just record them on in this and just release them as recorded videos. Um, maybe we can work that out. We'll see. Um, but yeah, thank you for the question, Daniel. Really appreciate that. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm going to be, why do I need to do that? You guys can see it right there, right? <laughs> uh, but yeah, anyway, um, I will be figuring that out at some point for sure. Daniel, thank you for the question. Uh, the cinnamon may have to wear down before the oud comes out. No, that oud is just like, if there is oud in there, it is like a whisper just to give it like a little bit of something else, but it ain't a oodin like I was hoping, you know? <laughs> um, D&G, the one comes to my nose, which has a little bit of a cinnamon bark feel, cinnamon stick feel. I agree with you. Definitely. Um, not the one-ish, but man, Bon Noir is really really climbing up that ladder like it's definitely yeah it's my number two favorite out of the out of the group so it's it's really smelling a real it's smelling really good on my skin i'm really really into it scent of the day beau de jour really good fragrance that's by the house tom ford great fragrance never thought of burning sage i love incense sticks i have to look into that yeah sage is great guys i mean it's a really great incense, though, but it's not easy for a lot of people because it can really smell like dirty socks. You know, you got to be really careful with sage. Uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> I'm really got to tell you, catch my whiff. I'm really appreciating them. I really think they're worthy. I definitely think you should get a sample pack. And I would not say that if I didn't feel that way. Like I, I was actually taking a risk, you know, putting this brand on my live because I'm live, you know, I can't fake it at all. Not that I ever would fake it, but it's not like I could sit here and pretend if I'm smelling something, my face is going to like it or not. And you're going to see it. You know, I can't hide how I feel when, it, when I'm smelling something. Like if I'm smelling something and it's not what I'm wanting, my face is going to show that, you know? So I was hoping that I would like more things than I dislike from this collection because this is a small brand and you don't want to affect small brands' businesses when you're not into something or if something doesn't fit your skin or your taste, you know? Just because it doesn't work on my skin doesn't mean it's not going to work on yours. So it's really important to keep that in mind that you need to experience things for, for, on your skin on your own. But of course, based on my taste and based on how I'm smelling them and based on how they smell on me, I'm impressed. I'm really, really impressed with what they're doing. Um, so... I like companies that are attentive to being as easy as possible, as being as easy as possible on the environment, 100%. Um, Marcel wrote, first time I wore Sin Santo, one of my coworkers walked into my office and said that someone sprayed bug spray on themselves, and I was crushed. What? See, that's why... That's why, you know what? Don't be crushed. You know what I would do? I would wear that fragrance again and I would spray it even more when that person is in, even in the office. That's what I would do. Cause there is no way that this smells like bug spray. Are you kidding me? First of all, mm. hell no, <laughs> absolutely not. What? No, um, <laughs> um, I think that your coworker has a really, really crappy nose and I'm sure that their fragrances are not the most impressive, you know, but even if they are impressive, that's one fragrance that they didn't like. I don't think that should affect your, your, that shouldn't affect you, my man. Don't let another man's thought on your fragrance make you feel crappy, you know, like, nah, please. Marcel, wear that fragrance even more around that person. That's what I would do. <laughs> Yo, honestly, because I'm blown away. Like, it's bug spray. With the scent of bug spray in my mind, there is no comparison. That person, I don't know the bug spray they use, but that's some good smelling bug spray. Yeah. Uh, Marcel, that person has a screwed up nose. Don't listen to him. Don't listen to him. 
I'm telling you guys, like, why do we pay attention to people with crap taste? Like, why do we want to smell? Why do we want to get compliments from people who have crappy taste? I don't understand that. Why do we care what people with bad taste think? You're the one that's you're the one that's doing the knowledge. You're the one that's doing the work to be like um, a fragrance enthusiast, a fragrance aficionado. Don't listen to your coworker. Your coworker needs to watch more of YouTube. <laughs> that is crazy. Don't let no one crush you, bro. Be proud with your scent. Um, but anyway, I have ascension and it's fire. Thank you so much, A Saw. That's awesome. Um, I appreciate. I really appreciate the the cosign because it is really, really on point. Probably the most niche fragrance of everything I put on my skin from the brand. This is probably the most artistic, the most out of the ordinary, the most unique and interesting, I would say. This is the one that if you wear it, most people are not going to understand it, you know? But that's why I feel like it's so interesting and beautiful. Great fragrance. Um, it sounds like you're talking about a soil note when you noted earth. I love a good soil note. Yes. I'm thinking like soil, meaning like earth, like wet earth. Like imagine like it rained and you was on some fertile, fertile ground and you took a scoop with your hand, smelled it. That's the earth I'm talking about. That's what I'm getting from this one, from a sense, from ascension. In a really good way. <laughs> that person is cracked out. Whoever said this smells like bug spray. Cracked out. Unbelievable. Um, <laughs> looking forward to seeing your reaction to Soul Cafe. Oops. <laughs> Oops. Um, Soul Cafe is my least favorite, guy. I'm so sorry, Asa. Uh, it's, it's not a bad one, but it's my least favorite, I have to say. It's good, though. It's good, but it's my, it's my least favorite, you know? And I'm not trying to be contrarian. I'm not trying to, oh, because it's... I'm not trying to be left because it's right. It's just not, you know, I would prefer the more... I would prefer to smell more unique and interesting. And I think this is still unique and interesting, but I don't like the... You know, probably because it gives me the Herba Pura vibe, I'm not a fan. That's probably why. That's probably why. I think that's probably why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's because it's given me that herb of pureness. It's probably why I'm not into it as much. But I still think it's worthy. And I still think, considering if you're into herb of pure, I think you would easily. And I think this is probably more masculine leaning than herb of pure. So if you're a guy and you smelled that and you were like, eh, that's not me. It's a little too pretty for my standard. I think this can easily fall in line with you. Because it's that, but not too much of it. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> that moment you like a frag so much you don't know what to say. Yeah, I felt like I was going through it like that twice at least. Because, man, this is like, I don't know what Jacobs is talking about. Sanitizer face, red heart shape. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> I love rose. It's my current favorite floral. I agree with you. Catch my whiff. And oh, it is next level. That's a beautiful rose. It's a really nice rose, guys, especially for that price. 135 for a 50 mil of this rose is a really good price. It's a sexy rose. This is not a rose to wear in the heat, though. This is not like a this is a night rose. But if it's humid, I would avoid it. This is a rose for like cold, cool, fall, winter nights out when the sun goes down oh man i cannot i'm actually probably going to buy this bottle i'm i'm probably going to get two of them i'm i'm probably going to get two of them no question the bon noir and the whiskey rose and probably ascension probably all three and and would say and ones and sin santo and sage or yeah sin santo and sage i, I might get off i might get all four of the ones that i gave a lady to so <sighs> Imitsu, Jason, <laughs> thank you so much, Jason, for coming through. Um, 
Micah Shoemaker, thank you so much coming for coming through, Micah. I really appreciate you. Soul Cafe is the one. Aso really dig Soul Cafe. Oh no. <laughs> I stick my face into my shirt to get ahead of my frag. People must think I'm checking for Oda. Oh my God. When I'm on the train and I'm like this, I'm wondering like, I know people are like, what the hell is on his finger? Like, what is on his finger? <laughs> I just got my first super chat. My gosh. Thank you so much, Ronaldo. It was not necessary, but I'm so grateful to you, my man. Thank you for that. Uh, Sin Santo and Sage puts me in a really relaxed mood. Absolutely, Ronaldo. Oh my gosh. Um, wow. Like, absolutely grateful for that. You have no idea. That's a that's a that's a really awesome that's a really awesome first for me. You know. Um, first of all, my channel got demonetized, and I had to like do a bunch of lives, and it took a minute for them to like re-monetize my channel. And not like that's a big deal to me, but. It's nice to be, like, appreciated, you know? Thank you so much. I appreciate you, you know? As you know, I work for you guys, so at the end of the day, um, I really, really appreciate the consideration. It's not, again, necessary. Please don't think it's necessary, because honestly, just you guys coming through is all that's necessary. Anyway, Woo Hoo Hoo is the, e <laughs> is the fragrant evil laugh. Tell me about it. I was like, Woo Hoo Hoo, what the hell is Woo Hoo Hoo? Um, Sin of the day, Mosk Milano Latessa. Go off, DJ World. You're killing me right now. <laughs> oh, no. Fragrant Evil Laugh. Ronaldo, you're the man, guy. I still can't get over you, my man. Um, <laughs> e, just don't ask someone else to smell your finger. Yeah, but then how would they smell how good this smells? Smell it. Go ahead. Smell it. <laughs> Oh, my God. It's almost like my finger was coming at you, right? Like, ah, no. <laughs> oh, no. If only this was 3D. That would be so crazy. I wish I could, like, I wish there was a smell of vision so I could just spray my camera and you guys could catch a whiff. That would be the next, next step. Are all these 1.7s? Yes, Micah. They're all 50 mil. Uh, she's getting a workout. Ah, uh, <laughs> Yes, she was. That lady was going off. She was going off. Um, Papa Bear, missed your last live. Thank you, bro. It's all good. You are here now. And you can always check that video out if you want to. You know, you could always go back, you know. I'm not going to hit on you for going back, checking out them old vids, you know. It's appreciated. Thank you so much. Uh, Asaur, E, you got to check out Soul Cafe and the Dry Down. Herba Pure is too chemical for me for where so Cafe smells more natural and more well-blended. I see what you're saying. Like I said, like, you know what it also reminds me of? Scent of Peace for Him by Bond. Soul Cafe is reminding me of Scent of Peace for Him, a little bit of Herba Pura, something like that. Very ashy, kind of like fruity, ashy, um, almost kind of smoky. It's a good one. I'm not trying to knock on you, bro. Your taste is on point. Trust me. It's a good one. It's on point. I like it. Trust me. I just don't love it. I love the other four, but I don't, I just like this one. Whereas I love, I like this one. Smell that. But I love these, you know? <laughs> I really, I really love these. I like this one. You know, so that's the reason why it got the womp womp. But that shouldn't be enough to get. I mean, it should get the lady too, but I'm being an extra. I'm trying to be like a little bit tough. You know, I'm trying to be a reviewer here. You know, I'm trying to be like I'm having high standards. Not everything is. I don't like everything, you know, because if I like everything, it comes across like I'm shilling. Right. So for the haters, I got to hate something. <laughs> I'm just playing. Um. Let's see, what's going on, E? So I scooped the sample set of Maker's Libertine. I super, oh, and Libertine, and try Libertine. Great scent, but it reminds me of an Atelier fragrance. I definitely could see that. If I were, I could see Libertine being a fragrance that Atelier made. I wish, though, Atelier Cologne made that instead of Lemon Island, and I'd probably still be, um, you know, 
I wouldn't have had like, you know, I, I wouldn't have had to look for a job for like a good eight months if that was the case, because I think Libertine is so good that um, I wish Atelier Cologne thought of it first, but it is what it is. Uh, <laughs> um, I hear more reviewers talking about Parfumo. It's interesting that they're not bashing Fragrantica, but Fragrantica seems to be solely becoming an F word. Fragrantica is not what it was. Fragrantica has a bunch of really bad reviewers reviewing fragrances when they just got into the fragrance world and everything is bad when they're good and everything is good when it's bad. It's just a weird, weird, bizarro world at this point. I do like some of the articles. I dig some of the, some of the ratings in terms of like how long a fragrance lasts on certain people, but I really take their ratings and I really take their reviews with a grain of salt. You know, I really don't pay attention to what people write on there, except for a few people that I trust, you know, that I've been reading for years, you know, like, you know, Chicago Tony is my dude. So, you know, if you like Chicago, read Chicago Tony's reviews on Fragrantica, you will not be misled. Shark is also awesome on there. Um, I'm also on there, the Mighty Haru, go check those out. Um, but yeah, um, I bought Soul Cafe when it came out. Lots of love when I wear it. Chris Classic actually sent me a video asking what tune if cap I wanted. Okay, but I get what you're trying to say. And that's really dope. Um, I'm glad, yo, Papa Bear, that's awesome that he did that, man. Chris Classic, is, is he seems like he's a really, really good guy, you know? I'm hearing really good things about this dude. Like, it's awesome when you don't, like, there's always someone talking something in this industry, in this, in this world of perfume. But not a lot of people are saying anything negative about Mr. Classic. Yo, E, where would you wear the whiskey rose fragrance? Love the background. Thank you so much, Jacobs. Um, where would I wear whiskey rose? To a bar, <laughs> on a date, the movies, a dinner. I would wear it to work when it's cold. I would easily wear it. I'm wearing this to Bergdorf Goodman tomorrow. <laughs> I'm wearing it in Bergdorf Goodman now, you know? Um, I, I think it's insane. It's, it's, it's beautiful. And yeah, I would, I would wear it anywhere I possibly can get a chance to wear it because I would flex the hell out of it. You know, that's, this is the type of fragrance that I honestly would spray a loud way so that people would notice it. And um, I would definitely tell people you're welcome when I walk into the room, you know. You're lucky you're smelling something this nice, you know. I'm getting the women out of their Libras, out of their, like, you know, Baccarat Rouge vibes. I'm getting the dudes out of their Blur de Chanel, Sauvage vibes. And, yeah, coming into room with something that will make men and women wonder, oh, damn, who that? Who that? That's what this smells like. Savoir Faire is a great brand. Soul Cafe and Bon Noir are my favorites. Awesome, Hidden Gems. You are really on point. Everybody's digging Soul Cafe. What is up? I mean, I can't, I can't, I can't, does nothing, I mean, I can't help it. I, I like it, I don't love it. Uh, <laughs> catch my whiff, brother, thank you so much. I really appreciate you, my man. Um, with the $5 super chat, appreciate your time, should have done this sooner. <sighs> thank you, thank you so much. I, I'm really, really grateful, I'm really, really grateful, but again, unnecessary but grateful. Um, <laughs> really, really here, man. Really, really, really here. Um, thank you so much. Uh, ah! You have no idea how much I appreciate that. Anyway, um, <laughs> typo. I got you, my man. It's all good, Papa Bear. Um, you're welcome. Awesome. Thank you. Catch my whiff. You have no idea. I'm very grateful, my man. Um, we'll return the favor at some point for sure. Um, Hidden Gems Podcast, I'm now just getting into Ascension and Sin, Santo and Sage. Yeah, I like both of them. I mean, I'm getting, I'm, I'm likely going to buy all four of these fragrances and I could easily probably ask him to ship me a couple of them and he might do so, but I really want to support this brand and I really suggest you all do it too. I know there's a lot of people who are like, ah, when they have to buy fragrances, um, when, when it comes to buying fragrances at retail, but 
When you're supporting an independent brand, it's important to support them retail. Don't buy them at discounters or eBay. If you can support the brand, get, get support the brand, you know, get those samples. And if you love them, support the brand. It's really important that we do that if we love the brands that we love, you know. Um, it's, it's unfortunate that a lot of the times we don't support these brands and the fragrances become discontinued. The brand has to close up shop or they get forgotten. So, like, it's really important, guys. Like, if you love something, tip them. Show them that support, you know. It's really, really awesome of you. So, guys, thank you so much for joining me on this live at Birdorf Goodman. It's always a pleasure. It's always and always a pleasure, guys. Um, definitely come back next week. Next week, we're going to be talking about some Zara discoveries that I found. And you guys know, like, I haven't been in... You guys know I did a lot of Zara fragrance videos in the past. I've put them in top 10 video lists. and top 10 lists, I haven't been to Zara in a while to buy a fragrance. And the other day, I went through and I looked on Fragrantica and I saw Anne Parfumo. And I saw that there were a few that people were giving a lot of attention to. And so I bought four of the eight that people have been like wowing over and I'm going to unbox them and spray them for the first time. I haven't sprayed them yet. So I'm going to be doing that next week. And then the week after that, I'm going to be going to the Maker. I'm going to be at the Maker Hotel, guys, and we're going to be filming live at the Maker. It won't be at Bergdorf. We're going to be live from the Maker and I'm going to be like filming in the fragrance room. This really cool room where you can go to the Maker Hotel, pick a fragrance out of 140 different options, and that'll be your scent of the day. I'm really looking forward to like just like going all in that closet and smelling all that I haven't smelled before. So I'm looking forward to going to visit the Maker Hotel in a couple of weeks. And you all will be coming with me on that visit. And I'll be showing you the hotel also live. Anyway, guys, it's a pleasure. Thank you so much for coming through. I'm E. This is Simply Put Sense. And I'm simply O-U-T. Peace.